All right, so now we have some examples to show you how to use more circle to find the principal stresses pretty quickly. In this problem, we have a normal axial force causing an axial normal stress of negative 12 megapascals and a torque causing torsional shear stress of negative six megapascals, giving us this element. So in order to draw the Mohr circle, remember we need to know the center of the circle and a point on the circle. Our center is gonna be located at sigma average. So that's negative 12 plus zero over two gives us negative six megapascals. So our center is gonna be located at negative six comma zero. And then our reference point is just gonna be sigma x comma tau xy. So that's negative 12 comma negative six. And we can just plot our center and plot our reference point. The previous slide showed how to calculate this radius, but we're just gonna use the Pythagorean theorem where the base of our triangle is six, and the height of our triangle is six. It's coming from 12 minus six plus, coming from this 12 minus six here, it gives us six. And we get the square root of the sum of the squares of those two legs is 8.49. If we know our center and we know our radius, then we can calculate our principal stresses here, where sigma one is our center plus our radius, and sigma two is gonna be our center minus our radius. Again, because sigma one is greater than sigma two. And so you get sigma one is 2.49 megapascals, which corresponds to this point B. And then sigma two is negative 14.5 megapascals, which corresponds to this point D. And then in order to be able to draw our element, we need to find the angle to at least one of our principal planes. In this case, we'll just find two theta P2, because that's our easiest angle to find here. It's just gonna be found from inverse tangent of our opposite over adjacent. So that's our same six divided by 12 minus six. And that's our two theta P2. We get 45 degrees, it's that angle, which makes sense. It's a one, one square root of two triangle. And so then our theta P2 is 22.5 degrees. So when we draw our element, we're gonna go from our original X axis, which was our reference point. And if we rotate theta P2 on our element, that 22.5 degrees, that's gonna take us to our second principal stress, sigma two, which is that compressive 14.5 megapascals. If we were to go a further 180 degrees, take us to point B, would be the same as going 90 degrees on our element, remember, because of this two theta versus theta relationship. So that 90 degrees would take us to sigma one at point B, which is our maximum tensile normal stress of 2.49 megapascals. All right, for the next example, we're given a state of plane stress this time they want us to find the maximum in-plane shear stress at this point and probably draw an element. So first to construct our circle, we need to digest what that element was telling us. We had a compressive 20 megapascals for sigma x, tensile sigma y of 90, and a positive tau xy of 60. So that's what we have. In order to find the center of our circle, we need to take the average of sigma x and sigma y. That's gonna give us 35 megapascals. So when we plot our Mohr circle, again, sigma on our x-axis, tau positive going down on our y-axis. So our center is gonna be at positive 35 on the sigma axis. And then our reference point is gonna be sigma x, which is at negative 20 comma tau xy, which is a positive 60, this 60 here. All right, then to find our radius, we just need to do the square root of the sum of the squares. So 60 squared plus 55 squared 
square rooted gives us 81.4 megapascals. That's our radius. Our max in-plane shear is going to be located at point E here, which is at sigma average, comma, max in-plane shear. And we know since this is just on our circle, that means we're just a radius away. So its y-coordinate is our radius, 81.4. And that's shown here. So our max in-plane shear is 81.4 megapascals. Its corresponding average normal stress is 35 megapascals. And then to find that angle between our reference point and where our max in-plane shear, that's our 2 theta S1, we can do the inverse tangent of the 55 divided by the 60 and then divide by 2. Don't forget about that part. You get theta S1 is equal to 21.3 degrees, which means this angle here is 42.6 degrees. All right, now for our final example, this one, they give us a state of plane stress at a point, and they want us to represent this state of stress on an element oriented 30 degrees counterclockwise from this position shown. We're not finding our principal stresses or a max shear stress. We just want to know what happens when we rotate this 30 degrees. So, same kind of construction of the circle though, we have our stress element where sigma x is negative eight, sigma y is 12, and tau x y was a negative six, negative six here. So our center is gonna be at negative eight plus 12 divided by two, so that's at two. And then our reference point is sigma x at negative eight, comma tau x y at a negative six. So we're above the sigma axis here for the negative. Your radius then is the square root of 10 squared plus six squared, gives you 11.66, right? So that's our starting point when theta is equal to zero. Now what we need to do is rotate our element 30 degrees, which means we're gonna rotate around our circle 60 degrees, because it's two theta. So this becomes a little trickier. You have to do a couple more steps of trig, but it's not too bad. So the first thing you have to do is find what this angle is here. They call it phi. And you can just find that from your inverse tangent of six over 10. So they do that here. And you find that that angle is 30.96 degrees. Okay, so phi is 30.96, which means the rest of this angle to take us to the point that we wanna find our state of stress at is gonna be 29.04 degrees subtract it from 60. Once you know what this angle is, you can calculate your x and y coordinates by finding this length from your right triangle and then this height from that same right triangle. So you can draw this triangle, you know this angle is 29.04 and then your coordinate is going to be the base of that triangle minus this 2 because we only care about this distance here. That's our sigma coordinate. But your height is gonna be your tau coordinate. So you can do that here. Our x prime, again, is that two, our initial starting point, and then it's gonna be minus our radius times cosine of that 29.04. And that'll give us our x coordinate of negative 8.2. And then tau x prime, y prime at that point is just gonna be the radius times sine of 29.04 degrees. That'll give you a positive 5.66 megapascals. So then you can start to draw your element. So we're rotating from x to x prime, a positive counterclockwise 30 degrees. And our sigma x prime is then a compressive 8.2 megapascals. Our tau x prime y prime on that face is going to be a positive 5.66 megapascals. Now to find the stress components that are going to be on our other face, our adjacent faces, either this one or this one. So for this one, we've rotated counterclockwise 30 to go 90 degrees away from that. So to go from this face to this face, 
we can just rotate 60 degrees in the opposite direction. That'll be a total of 90 degrees. That's going to be point Q on our circle. So that's over here. So 180 degrees away on our Mohr circle from our adjacent face, or 120 degrees away from our original element. So we already know this angle here. Those are vertical angles, as they're called, so they're equal to each other. And so you can find these coordinates in a similar manner. Your x component is going to be 2 plus this base, because here's our origin. We move over 2. That length is going to be our additional x distance. And then we already know the result of what our tau x prime y prime should be. It should be the same value here. So again, 11.66 times sine of 29.04. But remember, this is going to be a negative tau x prime y prime because we're going in the negative tau direction here. So you get 12.22 tensile and a negative 5.66 for tau x prime y prime. And that's shown here on this face. Positive 12.2 and a negative 5.66. They call this x prime here, but normally we would just call that the y prime direction like is shown here. So don't be confused by that technicality. All right, that's it for the examples. There's plenty of other worksheet problems that show similar things, but with a little more detail and I wrote out more instructions, they serve as a pretty good reference as you work through the homework. So I'll see you over on those worksheet problems and then into the final chapter nine lecture slide.